Hello there YouTube, Devin here again. My voice might be a little bit muffled as I kind of move around here because I have too much stuff within to keep within an arm's length that will now be going on sale for the second round of the support sale uh, and also kind of cleaning event to kind of help consolidate my collection to more uh, to be a more focused kind of collection on a few of the countries I collect from because there's a lot of stuff from the countries I really don't collect from that I just happen to have back when I was trying to get anything and everything that I now would like to give to a good home in your case and since the first thing did so well except for two kind of hiccups and I apologize to those of you who were part of those hiccups but we had some issues where I my trademarks when I used Kevlar didn't hold up, when I used the word Kevlar didn't hold up. And so eBay pulled both the listings, even though one of them had already been paid for. And I was not allowed to print a shipping label and stuff for that, unfortunately. But I refunded those people. So if you think that you haven't got refunded yet, go check your PayPal because the money is there for you. You just need to physically collect it. So, um, and they will be relisted now without using the word Kevlar. So if you did bid on them, uh, they're the same listing. So, uh, well, the same price as the last listing with pretty much the same pictures and everything. So that way you guys can go through and uh, buy them again. Uh, as everything went uh, so, so good the first time, I figured I'd do some more here the second time. So we'll show you what we got for sale here now. Um... This first one is an Italian contracted Yugo M33 helmet. So uh, the Yugoslavian government bought a lot of these M33s for the National Police Force, uh, which were really, really well liked. They're made out of thicker steel than standard M33s, and they have this nice kind of gray paint on them, as well as this beautiful um, padded leather chin strap assembly with this very nice kind of rubberized plastic chin cup, very comfortable. Um, it's missing the drawstring on the top, but it has this beautiful soft black leather liner. Makes it a very stable, very, very comfortable helmet. Um, so that's up. We have a tan RBR F6 in size medium, with, uh, which is listed as used. You can get it at a very uh, reasonable price. This one's in good condition. Uh, the liner does have one broken bracket in the back, but it can be fixed with super glue, and I just don't want to take the time to do it. So that's up for listing. Uh, they're very rare, used by the American Special Forces before they develop their own helmets. Uh, we have a Slovakian ASR-97 Kevlar helmet uh, in very, very good condition with the intact crest, as you could see. The liner is a Pazgat style in used condition as well, um, up for a very reasonable price on the channel. So if you're interested in Slovakian military, which they actually have a lot of really, really good surplus, that would be the way to go. Um, we have another super, super rare helmet here. Now this one, uh, if you look at it, you might just think, well, that's an Austrian M75. And you're not wrong. Um, but it's an Austrian M75 that was modified for mountain trooper use by the fact that it has a chin cup. Um, it has some extra little stops and pads sewn onto the chin, chin strap. And it has this added D-ring here at the back which allows the helmet to be routed onto the pack for e uh, ease of visibility and neck strain while you're climbing. Other than that, it has the same exact kind of M75 liner and these cool little clips that hold the liner in place so the liner doesn't have any chance of falling out while it's flopping around on the back of your pack. So that's super, super, super rare as well. Um, that one's a pretty good price. We have a uh, size large, brand new unissued, uh, U.S. Marine Corps Gen 2 lightweight helmet, which, which means it has the uh, ACH pads, as you can see here. So, And it comes with a night vision shroud. We have a brand new, uh, unissued French Gen 1 F1 helmet. Uh, the Generation 1 F1 helmets are very easy to uh, tell from the other two because the liners are held in place with screws rather than snapped or rivets. And it has this kind of round crown pad as you can see by the chin cup on this one a hundred percent unissued brand new this one is actually i believe according to the stamp in it um it's a very very pretty early production one as well if you're looking uh the next one's actually really really cool as well another french helmet 
This is a French M51 helmet. Now this one comes with some extras. Uh, this is a brand new unissued French M51 helmet liner. Uh, it has the tanker slash armored personnel carrier uh, liner in it, which is just like the infantry liner basically, except made out of a much, much thicker plastic. Uh, it has a crown pad that's foam at the top there, and this really, really nice leather nape pad. Um, but it does come with a plastic infantry liner with it as well. So that listing, basically you get a helmet and two liners with it. This is a pretty rare helmet that I'm actually pretty proud to get. Uh, this is a U.S. Marine Corps issued PASGAT from the first Iraq war era, like the big invasion from like 2003, where the Marine Corps could not make enough lightweight helmets, the Gen 1 lightweight helmets, which still had like the PASGAT liner style. So they had to start issuing PASGATs with liners of lightweight helmets in them so they could free up more lightweight helmets for infantry use and this one has the PASGAT chin strap in it still but as you can see has the lightweight helmet liner which is much more comfortable than the PASGAT liner but still pretty much the same principle it distributes weight a lot better and it doesn't cut into your head as much so very very nice and this is a brand new size large basically unissued version of that. So pretty rare as well. That one's got some cool history behind it. We have a brand new unissued Polish WZ-2000 Kevlar helmet. Uh, very, very lightweight. Uh, performed very, very well ballistically. Um, and as you can see, this is in a size 2, which is kind of a size larger. These are all around like size 58 uh, for the most part. So all these fit me and I'm a size 58. And as you can see here, the chin strap and liner is in brand new condition, so very rare to find in unissued condition like this. We have a pretty rare finish M40-55. The reason that what makes this one rare is it has the new liner, uh, the 55 style liner, which means the liner is basically brand new and really soft and comfortable in it, but it was never repainted during that amount of time. So as you can see, it still has the kind of glossy original World War II paint. It didn't ever receive the updated paint like this. So this one, the only thing separating it from a World War II helmet, uh, a World War II actual like produced helmet is the fact that it got a new liner, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because the liners are actually really, really, really close to the German World War II liner. So it actually has original World War II paint and it's an original World War II shell, just doesn't have a World War II liner. It has a post-war liner in it. So pretty rare. Uh, what else we got here? Danish M2341. Now the only real difference between these and the actual Danish M23s is they basically kind of simplified manufacture a little bit. Instead of cutting big holes for the big brass badge at the front, they just put a little brass uh, ID disc and they changed the paint from a rough texture to a smooth texture. Other than that, they are the same helmet as you can see here, basically unissued condition. It's got some minor like storage wear and stuff like that, but basically brand new for sale. And all the links will slowly be appearing after this video comes out because I have to go back and copy and paste each link individually into the description, but they will all be back. So if you don't see the link to the helmet that you want right away in the description, I might still just be copy and pasting it, so check back in a little bit. Uh, so this was a project helmet of mine to make a Soha helmet. Now this is an uh, DH-132C, which means it's the ballistic Kevlar shell, which means it's the same thickness as a PASGAT and an ACH, but I put a pilot's super comfortable breathable helmet liner in it and a chin strap so you could use it as like a, a combat helmet for comms uh like the uh special forces did in the 90s before they actually had like an actual helmet made for them they would take tanker helmets like this and make their own ballistic helmets so pretty neat pretty rare uh put my own take on that one we have your bog standard size large surplus pasgat this is probably from like the late 80s or 90s when the government started to surplus these out to police departments you could tell because this is an actual 
government contracted it has an nsn pasgat in size large but it was just painted over the green black um you could actually see some of the green starting to wear through on the rubber rim around the edge that as you can see brand new size large very reasonably priced so we have a Czech VZ32 eggshell helmet. This one um, is a post-war retrofit, but it's got basically the same liner as the World War II ones. The liner has just been changed to a synthetic material, which is good because it's not going to break apart that easy, and it doesn't stink as bad when you sweat in it. So, brand basically unissued, so it has some dust on it. And then we have a very late production Yugo M89 shell. Uh, this one's going for really cheap, so if you're introductory into the helmet collecting world, this is going to be a very, very good chance for you to get a Kevlar helmet, because this is basically an unissued, really, really good condition shell that you can go on eBay and buy a Pazgat liner from and, like, sweatband, and some mounting hardware, like a screw set from a Pazgat, and you could put that liner in here, which is basically the liner that was in it anyways, and have a really, really good kevlar surplus helmet to begin with as you can see this one's basically unissued um it's got some wear around the rim from storage but it even has it's kind of faint in there but the picture showed on the ebay listing there's the intact stamp from the factory at the top which is very 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 hard because they oftentimes wear off and very very rare to see one with the intact stamp in it and then oh, man it's getting hot in here so then we have the the two Kevlar vests that the listings got pulled on, again, these are a French CCE Kevlar vest. It does have the ballistic panels in it. Anything that does not contain Kevlar, I'm sorry to my international viewers, I cannot send anything that contains Kevlar outside of the United States because of ITAR regulations. You cannot send body armor outside of the U.S., even if it's collectible, even though these are outdated vests. I cannot do that because that can get me labeled as a terrorist and I could receive some pretty serious fines and some other other jail time and stuff like that. So, But this does have the Kevlar panels in it. Uh, it is very, very heavy. It is in new unissued condition in size medium large and they are incredibly hard to find with the Kevlar panels. And then I have a German one here as well. This is a German Flecktarn Bundeswehr flak jacket with in brand new unissued condition with the Kevlar panels in it. Still, once again, I cannot send this outside the United States, so do not ask. And all of these are going to be listed on eBay here. And it, well, they're already all listed on eBay, but I will get all of the links put into the description of the video here in the next couple of minutes. I just have to go back and copy and paste them all. So. Hopefully you guys like all this stuff. This is basically what's left to clean up out of my helmet collection. And if a lot of this stuff sells, we'll move into some of the other stuff in my collection, like canteens and crap. So hopefully you guys buy this junk. You guys were overwhelmingly supportive of the last one. I really, really hope some of you like some of the stuff. A lot of this crap is incredibly rare and hard to find here in North America. So it might not be so hard to find for some of you guys in Europe. But a lot of the stuff is incredibly hard to find in this condition here in North America. So I hope you guys get a chance to give it a good home because a lot of these things are only going to have one listing. And if they don't sell, um, I'm just going to think there's no interest in them and I'm going to pull them so I don't have to keep paying the fees on them. So, so it's in your best interest to bid now if you want these items. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video and hopefully we get a boatload of money to get so many projects and new stuff done for new videos for you guys so you guys went overwhelmingly supported last time that i was able to get something i've really wanted for a long time that will be making it onto a video very very soon so see you all later bye